Hello and welcome to Design Patterns. Today we are going to talk about the prototype. So the prototype is about creating objects by cloning them from templates. How can it look like? Uh, it looks like this. So the prototype basically has only one method, which is called clone. And what this method does is cloning, making a deep copy of all structural information of this of this object. One additional thing is the prototype has structural information about his build up, about his members, about his methods, and so on, and has some means to call them. So in that way you can create prototypes on the fly during runtime. You can add and remove properties, you can add and remove methods, and if you want uh, a copy of that, if you want to create new uh, objects, you simply clone the, the full inner state of the prototype. So what the clone method does is it returns a copy of itself. So the context of a, of a prototype is when we want to create objects whose properties or whose classes are not known at runtime, uh, at compile time. So they are only known at runtime, they are configured dynamically and flexibly, and therefore we cannot write them as source code at compile time. So the problem is, how can we implement such a system, such, such a very dynamic system? Uh, in many scripting languages, this is already built in, like in Python or Java, um, or JavaScript, this is this is already built in. For other languages, you have to yeah implement it yourself. What are the forces? Um, one force is that some members are defined at runtime, so we cannot program them directly. They are added at runtime to the object. We want to avoid complex class hierarchies and factories because um, these prototypes could completely replace a, a typing system of a, of a modern programming language. And if we want to create every, every prototype by a factory, this would explode in many, many factories, which we want to avoid. We also want to avoid long-taking instantiations. So if we every time have to add uh, the methods and properties to a prototype, we have to initialize the memory and so on, then this would take very long. Um, we want to have it uh, automatically and yeah, quite statically. Uh, not statically, dynamically. So the solution for this is we declare a cloning interface. So the one method to clone an object, then we implement it by adding a deep copy mechanism to the prototype and then we of course have to add a mechanism for dynamically storing uh, and calling members and methods of this prototype. For example, most programming languages do it with a dictionary. What are the consequences? We can now create dynamic objects, objects which we have never known before and seen before. We can add and remove properties. Um, we can bypass the class system which is often very useful, uh, but I will speak about this, this part uh, later again, because this is not always a benefit. We don't have a complex inheritance hierarchy anymore, so we can just create objects, clone them, change them. Um, so the inheritance um, is created on the fly. So it's not inheritance per se, it's more like a um, copy, copy hierarchy, reference hierarchy, so to say, reference hierarchy. Um, Long-taking initialization are only done once. So if um, we create a new prototype, it's only created once and afterwards copied. So then one thing is, if we create so many prototypes on the fly and we store them in a list, how can we find them and, and use them later on? So um, 
we have to have some kind of registry where we store our our prototypes in order to recall them again and use them again later on. Should we do a shallow or a deep copy? So is structural information alone enough or should we copy all um, underlying prototypes also? Because um, prototypes could contain references to other prototypes. How deep should we copy? How can we access members? Because in most programming languages, the normal dot syntax doesn't work anymore. On Python, there are some mechanisms how we can circumvent this, but other languages don't have these mechanisms. So should we always do this um, index access maybe? Or do we have a lookup method which returns a function pointer? So this we have to decide. And we lose type safety. So just before the class system is bypassed, uh, called as a benefit, because it makes uh, programming much easier, but we lose type safety. And this is a huge um, drawback, because in bigger systems, you want to have type safety. You want to have some uh, checks at compile time if everything is fitting together. Yeah, we don't have compile time errors, which is also a huge drawback. So for smaller scripts, it's fast and easy, but for bigger systems, you really have to uh, ensure that uh, everything is working. So if you are doing test-driven development, then this could work, but uh, without it, it may be difficult because you don't see the errors. Okay, so this was the prototype. Thank you very much.